I'm going to talk about post program support. And first of all, I'm really blown by all the work that you all are doing. And I think open life science is really small compared to, uh, you know, the, the, the scale that you have managed to cover. Um, I put a slide on what the program is. It's a 16 week long program where anybody who's interested in learning about open science, but applying it in their project at the same time can join. So I think we have an intention, intentional barrier where we say that you need to bring either an idea or a project that you're already working on where you can apply these principles. And the reason behind that is, is that we, we think that the value of open source is a lot more manageable and apparent when people are actually applying them. Otherwise, it does not make sense. It does not make sense what, what principle can they use in their own work. So uh, we try to do one-on-one -on -one mentorship, but then when we say one-on-one, -on -one, it's not one mentor, one mentee. We can have one mentor for one project and the project can be led by an individual or it can be uh, led by a team of uh, members who are working together. Uh, we have seen that often the team work really well because people hold each other accountable. And at the same time, a lot of our mentees are volunteers of the project that they are leading. And therefore, when they are coming in a team, they get a lot more uh, work done. So they really find working in open life science as like an accountable place where they are leading something because it's a time bound thing. Uh, this program is... Uh, is led by Bernice, uh, Emmy, uh, Yo, and me, uh, but we are really the facilitator of the program because it's completely volunteer driven. Our mentors are volunteers, our experts are volunteers, and I'll later discuss uh, how we want to actually change a little bit of the volunteer culture. So we are currently in the third iteration of program. We started uh, last year and the program came out of Mozilla Open Leadership, which is another set of mentoring program that had been running quite successfully. Um, and they had to stop offering it. So they did something like a train the trainer where people like us could go in and design our program and launch it. Um, and several, uh, I think we were one of the 10 programs that were launched. Uh, and I believe that there were some programs that were actually launched within uh, African communities. So I'm gonna uh, just quickly say that this is a 16 week program. We don't do every week meeting, but we do have one week of cohort call where people can come and join us. Well, people are expected to uh, join us, but it's not uh, required. They can follow up by watching the video. So the cohort training is when we bring experts, we discuss certain set of concepts, and then the week after they meet their mentors, they discuss with them what they learned, uh, how they can apply those principles into their work. And uh, we also supply assignments, uh, somewhat very similar to what we heard for Code for Africa. Um, and the topics, the choice of topic has been done based on our personal experience. We picked the topic uh, with, an, with an intention that people build a project which is community oriented, uh, because uh, you, uh, Bernice and I have been a community manager in either professional or personal capacity. And we believe that we want to do something which is a combination of technical and cultural skills that they can learn in the program. Um, I would not go in the details of the topics, but just so you know, they're all related to open and inclusive work design. So I want to actually start by asking you to uh, help me uh, explore this a little bit. So uh, I have a slight question for you. So if you all can actually, if you want, you can also try to take a picture with your phone and hopefully that will re redirect you to the website but if not then you can uh, link to slido.com and enter post program and hopefully you should see this question open what post program support means to you in the context of mentorship Let me I see how you're putting it back into people's hands. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was stolen idea from you because she was setting it up for her presentation. Uh, but to be honest, I started to think about post-program support more structurally when I was designing the stock. And I really think that there is quite a lot that I can learn from all of you.
Uh, so what so happened? That, yeah, I just want to share that the text input is really short. Like I, I wrote a really long sentence and then it. Yeah, it, you can put as many keywords as you want. So you can put multiple entry. Um, and I would also like you to think about what support you would need if you were a mentee, if you were a mentor, if you were a program organizer or facilitator. So I put as many keywords as you feel is useful, because I'm hoping that this slide will be then shared with Among Us and we can come back to it for our own reference. So yeah, uh, most importantly that, that I was thinking about it is, it was around what kind of support network can we provide to people once they have finished it? Uh, are there financial support available to them? Because it's not enough probably just to design a project, they might need to uh, advance their project, right? Additional support, because, and I'll also discuss that. I'm really glad that there are things that are uh, resonating with everybody, community, uh, long-term uh, continued engagement, positive outcome, and so on. Please keep adding it because this is really a note for all of us to come back to, right? So this is what I uh, wanted to explore that support might mean quite different to different stakeholders. Mentees may have different interests, mentors and facilitators would have different interests. And again, we need to think about funders and partners because uh, often we want to rely on sustainability via uh, some sort of support. So I have designed my talk to just explore some of these nuances and I'm talking really little about open life science and just in general what mentorship post program support should look like. So first of all, why we require support for mentees. So as you all were saying, the continued learning. Uh, mentorship is transformational because there is often no immediate outcome. All the things that we learn through mentorship is probably applicable to what we do next in our life and the other project that we will work on. So these projects that they bring into our program are just a dummy project to let them see what would happen. But the next time they go to a different project, they might be able to apply different principles. So in order to ensure that they have these transformational effect, we want to allow them to revisit the learned skills and ask right question that they would not have asked at the time of mentorship. We also want to recognize their progress and engagement, right? We want to uh, appreciate all the things that they're doing and celebrate their success. And we need to provide them those kind of opportunities to share them. And one of the ways that a lot, a lot of you have already discussed that we want to allow them to pass on their knowledge to new mentees and therefore come back into the program and share what they learned or, or just, you know, uh, posting something on the Slack, hey, I got a grant or, or I got an award and people are really happy for each other. That's just already really great. Then providing a network for support and for the development. And this is also where we all want to think about, uh, can we provide them a, a platform for exchanging ideas and resources? And these resources could be jobs, uh, event information, and so on. And most importantly, building a sense of community through peer interaction. So when we build these communities, the interactions are not very natural because people aren't sure what to ask. But when we allow these open discussions and when they see that different people ask very simple question and people are very happy to reply to those, uh, people become more engaged. And I think this is what we have seen in Open Life Science, that people ask simple question as uh, how can I create a, a GitHub account, right? And people are not taking it as a silly question. They really guide people through by sharing information. So we want to provide ways for them to continue even after that program. So when we give them this place to you know, feel special, they want to make others feel special. And that's why when they get to become mentor, they create a lot more value in our program than any expert would have. So to summarize, we want to create, in our case, we use Slack channel, but I'm, I'm really assuming that in your case, you also have WhatsApp or it could be any communication channel that works for the community you work with. We also want to uh, find and share these opportunities for grant events and jobs. And especially talking from the point of view that I am sitting in Europe in a very privileged position, I get invited to be uh, a speaker in events, I, I get invited to be in a panel uh, where I can review grant proposal and I have this opportunity to share these spaces with other people so I can pass on the opportunity that doesn't serve me anymore, but the other people can make, you know, huge, um, they can benefit a lot from that. 
targeted email i i have been i'm really feeling motivated by uh, the automation task we do a lot of personal emails and i think that consumes a lot of time but in case uh, you know after the program these emails I, I would suppose the targeted emails would have a lot more impact because it allows people to uh, connect with us after the program is over. Uh, we haven't tried it, but open office calls for people who have finished the program and, and might want to connect might be something useful in inviting people to not just join as mentors, people who are still quite young and not very confident in becoming members. Uh, mentors, we actually are trying this round to help them become facilitators. So the point of bringing as facilitator is that they still have ways to connect with us. So another is mentors. We've talked a lot about mentors, so it won't surprise you that some of the things that we want to think about is do they have fair value exchange system? Can they gain the skills uh, instead of just giving everything in the community? So we want to provide training and often professional skills that is not part of their job. And something that we heard in the previous talk that um, people want to be recognized for the skills that they have. So giving them opportunity to talk about the skills and even further their personal uh, professional skills. Recognizing members for their contribution, highlighting members and acknowledging their work. And this I will show a little bit in a way how we do it, because I feel that often these people are under recognized and this is not a new thing you've already said about this, but how can we give them the recognition? How can we create a platform that really serves them, that really allows them to brag a little bit about themselves? Then provide a network uh, similar as mentees. We want to give a network for support. We want to give them a platform for exchange ideas and resources. In our case, we have a private channel for mentors so they can discuss mentor-specific struggles and they can share mentor-specific skills with each other. And rewarding mentors for their volunteers, volunteer work. And this reward we have also discussed already. And I think the idea is that we want to help them sustain their energy in a longer term because we don't want to burn them out in one round that they don't come back next round. But in, in the, at the same time, we want to have a, a place for them to take a break whenever they can. So to summarize this one, we in our program, we provide a professional mentor training. This training is something I'm sure we all can from the program provide, but when we bring someone from outside as, as a professional consultant, it really serves the purpose in terms of that this is our way to make our mentors feel special and gain the skills that they want to. Open recognition for mentors, a communication channel, which is dedicated for mentor engagement and allowing breaks between the, their service and honoraria and other benefits when possible. And I think this is really Honoraria is a nuance uh, that I, I I'm sure I hope that you will have some time to talk about it because honoraria setting is not easy because transferring is the less of the problem. But if you have to pay tax, if, if there for any reason you can't accept foreign money, I am not in a position to explain this, but I'm uh, very happy if you can share some of the resources that you have put in place. Um, Facilitators, this is what I was talking about. If we have a mentee from one program that, that has done an amazing job, but isn't ready yet to become mentors, we want to bring them back into the program by making them facilitators. Um, it may seem like that they are doing a lot of background and admin tasks, and that's why we want to make it easy for them to do these by providing resources and guidelines and ways to ask questions. We also want to recognize their work and highlight it whenever we can. Um, similar to other members, we want to give them this opportunity to network and exchange ideas. Um, the, even though the task that we, uh, we as facilitator do can be deemed very small and irrelevant, it is still very important for these members to feel confident about their leadership skill because they are doing tasks that no one else is doing it and they get to see the, the processes that we conduct at the leadership level. So in order to make their life better and support them, we want to provide resources, uh, connect them in the different uh, platform that we are using, openly recognize their work and uh, also give them communication channel and recruit as many facilitators as possible in the future, because of course, these are not very interesting tasks, uh, but it is still quite useful for the program. Finally, the funders and partners, uh, in order to make sure that even after the program is over, our funders are uh, 
willing to connect with us, we also want to think about what kind of value exchange system we are building in the program. So we need to be proactive in terms of the reports that we are publishing, the, the impact that we are capturing from the program. So nobody has to ask us that they, they already get to see it all the time. Uh, showing effectiveness of our mentoring program and allowing them to track the progress uh, and success. One of the ways this can be done if if the the funders are willing to come to your program as mentors. In our case, that's that that is uh, one example that one of our funders is actually also a mentor, and they get to see how you work. And if they appreciate the work that you're doing, it becomes much easier for us to keep maintaining this kind of relationship and uh, having more proactive interaction beyond just writing the grant. So yeah, always think about uh, annual report, uh, make your communication as transparent as possible, uh, host it and post it wherever you can, write blogs and open calls. In our case, we also try to give a lot of conference talk in order to get the word out and, and reach the community that we haven't reached yet. So I would not do a demo in, in the interest of time, uh, but our website is, uh, I need to acknowledge Bernice. She spent a lot of time to make it fair, as open and as uh, transparent as possible. And most of our uh, management related task is handled via GitHub. So to summarize how we are doing it in open life science in terms of uh, support system, um, we want to make sure that all our resources are openly available, but we are also working on open life science in the volunteer capacity, and we often aren't able to manage to publish a lot of our things, but they're all connected to our website. We try to openly recognize all our members. Uh, we uh, have communication channels. Um, we try to share as many opportunities as possible and often connect with our mentees personally. But again, our mentees, uh, let me give you numbers. Currently, we have around 30, 35 projects and 60 mentees. And we, we have the opportunity to connect with them very personally compared to a lot of you where you are ma managing thousands of members where this might not be possible. Um, some of the things that I would, I would just skip this uh, because I have the slide. Uh, our program was running on completely personal capacity uh, for the first round uh, because we wanted to show an evidence that this program is successful and it works well. Uh, and in the second round, Software Sustainability Institute, uh, who, who, well, you and I are fellows of this program. They allowed us to use our fellowship towards open life science in order to pay for infrastructure. And then uh, based on our second round, we could actually write a proposal to get more funding from Code for Science and Society who are allowing us to use the funding for infrastructure and micro grants. And these micro grants are for the participants in order to claim uh, cost for data, for headphone or webcam or anything small that they feel is required, including registering a domain or registering their uh, project as a nonprofit. We have standing grants from EOSC Life and the Alan Turing Institute in order to build stronger connection with the European life science community and the Alan Turing Institute in general. But, but again, these funding are not a lot. This doesn't pay for the people's time and we are still not in a place to offer honoraria just because we're not able to um, negotiate that with the funders because funders don't like to give honoraria. They like to give some sort of money which allows them to say that they are supporting a project, but there is a lot of limitations that we have. And these are not enough for the sustainability. In, in the form of sustainability, what would, be, what would be very ideal that we can pay someone to lead this program so we don't have to work outside our work hour and someone is actually leading it in full time. I did not do this, but I, uh, I thought that maybe uh, some sort of uh, project planning canvas could be useful for us when we are thinking about uh, putting support in the beginning of the program, in the middle of the program, at the end of the program. So uh, it would be a good thought process if uh, you're planning to create a new program, can we use uh, something like this in order to uh, create a roadmap for our own project? So finally, uh, again, I'm gonna stop talking and you have another question. So. I, it was a very fast track discussion on what post program support can be made available in mentorship, but as per your interest and the project, what do you think? 
we should consider in addition to all the things that I have talked about and may have missed. So this is also add as many words and keywords as possible uh, in terms of what else you would like to consider in the support. <laughs>